Hello friends and welcome back to another episode of our Road to Ranked Roulette series. My name is Lee, also known as Osiris, and today is Thursday, so it means we've activated no bonus buttons so far this week. I'm going to activate all three, leaving one out, which we'll activate tomorrow, right now. So we're going to activate the Switch Up first, then the Legend Maker, and then the Randomizer. So, <sighs> I'm nervous about it, but I feel like the team needs a little bit of help. We've had some great games so far this week. If you've missed any of them, would like to check them out. I'll put a card up there for you. And without further ado, I guess, what's the worst one? The randomizer, because we have to lose something randomly from the team and then throw something else in. And I I can't pick which Pokemon I really want to take out right now. So um, we'll pick the randomizer. And we'll go over to the wheel right now, see which Pokemon it is going to be that we're going to lose this week. Oh, it's Diggersby, it's Diggersby the bunny. The bunny has been our favourite member of the team so far this week. It's done so much work. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm devastated that we've lost it. <laughs> Okay, we need a replacement ground type. 100%. We need a replacement ground type. Let's go over to the wheel again and see what we've got in place of our favourite bunny ever in Pokemon history. Ever. Okay. It's Golduck. Okay. It's, it's not a rabbit. It's a duck. And it doesn't know any ground type attacks. At least I don't think it does. But, I mean, it kind of works. We've got two airlock Pokemon. Um, okay, so, on that logic, I'm going to activate the Legend Maker button now. Because if we can randomly select our Rayquaza, then we've still got airlock active. And we can still utilize that. And we don't have the conflict there. So, I think this could work quite well. Right, let's head over to the wheel. Let's see which Legendary we're going to lose this week. It's Mewtwo X. <laughs> I'm sad about this. We never really got Mewtwo X kind of working this week. And it's really sad because I know a lot of you have kind of wanted to see it played. Like I said in our last episode, if you'd like to see more Mewtwo X, definitely nominate it in the coming weeks. There's a post up on the community section right now. And uh, you can go over there and nominate it. And hopefully we have a different combination of Pokemon where it can really thrive. Because I do feel like it's a Pokemon that has a lot of potential in this format. Do go over there and uh, do give it a vote. But we'll head over to the wheel again to see which new legendary we're going to have in place of our good old Mewtwo X. <laughs> Duskman Necrozma, David, thank you so much for that suggestion this week. We've got Duskman Necrozma and Mega Rayquaza. So, that's that's a nice combination. I feel confident about that. <laughs> like, really confident about that. We've got one more button to activate, though. It is going to be our switcher button. And I think... Could I cheat? Could I cheat a little bit and see which Pokemon that we're going to actually activate, like, which we're going to achieve? I, I'm going to do it. I'm going to say we're going to go over to the wheel now. We're going to see what Pokemon comes out, and then I'm going to replace it, because I get to choose on the Pokemon that comes out what we replace it with. So we'll head over to the wheel. I know it's cheating, but we need a little bit of help. We need a little bit of help. And uh, it's not really cheating, because we're kind of making the rules up. So bending the rules this week. Because of the score. And we want to finish good. I'll head over to the wheel now. See what we pick. And then we'll come back. And we'll select one Pokemon to go out from the team. So, wheel, what have you got for us as our last button of the day? <laughs> Crobat. Okay, Crobat. This feels like a, like a solid team. I'm sad that we've lost the Diggers B. But we've got Duskman, Necrozma. We've got the Golduck. And now we've got Crobat. Now we've got to pick something from the team. Um, it's going to have to be Butterfree. Jason, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Butterfree's done amazingly well this week. It's been great seeing it. If you want to see it in future weeks, get nominated in it again. There's every chance it can come out. We've had This is the second week that Infernape's been out. So we've got our new team going into today's episode. Like I say, I feel really confident about it. Um, we've got Rayquaza, Dustman, Necrozma, the Crobat. We've got the Golduck, the Ditto, and the Incineroar still. So this is the team. Team is down in the description below. There is a Roll Pace, Poker Pace. Check it out. Try it out if you're mad enough, as always. 
But I don't feel too bad. We've went with the Sword Stance set on the Dustman and Crossman with Earthquake, uh, Sunsteel Strike. Uh, we've went reverted back to that uh, the choice band on Re Rayquaza, so Mega Rayquaza there. We've got one Mega now in the team, which is really nice. Um, we've got uh, the Crobat, obviously there for helping out against Xerneas Speed Control, Taunt. Um, we've got a good Groudon check in Golduck with the Life Orb there. Uh, Ditto, Scarfed still, and then the Infernip we went for a, a Fer Fireinium set. So, without further ado, let's click into it. Let's get into today's episode. I'm pretty excited about today's. Today's exploits, it should be quite good. Um, so, let's select some music. Let's go in homage of our Duskman Necrozma. Let's go. You know, you know what track I'm going to go for. I'm not even going to say it. <laughs> you know. So the rain's not too bad. We're not too far away from 1500 where we can go. And I know I shouldn't concentrate on it too much. But I do concentrate on it way too much. And I do think it's a nice target for us to aim for. And I feel like with our record at the minute, with two wins, four losses, we can turn this round. With this squad, we can turn it round. Duskmane and Rayquaza cover each other so well. Uh, it's such a formidable partnership. We haven't got exactly the most amazing Pokemon surrounding it, but they're a, a, a fun bunch, and I feel like they can do some work. And I, yeah, we just got to believe in them. So, looking for our first opponent, it's going to take a little bit longer than what I would have liked to. So we'll cut it here. We'll be right back when we find that first opponent of the episode. And we got a first opponent of the episode, so we can kick straight into it now and go straight into team preview. First opponent today is running a team of Kyogre, Rayquaza, Incineroar, Tapu Koko, Crobat, and Ferrothorn. So we've got that infamous Kyogre, Rayquaza combination supporting options there of Incineroar with the fake out support, the U turn for pivoting, especially in this team, which is quite vital. And then the Intimidate as well, alongside that Tapu Koko terrain control, going to prevent any sort of sleep powder. Does threaten our Crobat and quite a few members of our team, depending on what item it's holding. It could be the Z move, it's more than likely that it is. Is the Crobat there going to be able to set up speed control for the team? And then the Anti-Trick Room Pokemon of the team. And something to give a little bit more help against Xerneas, Fairies, and opposing Kyogre with its Grass and Steel Typing Ferrothorn. So, um, hmm, what will be good for us here? Hmm, ha. Ah, this is pretty tough, isn't it? Banded Ray could be good, definitely. Uh, Crobat could also be pretty decent for us to set up uh, I think Crobat's like not bad to be honest if we can get a Tailwind up I do like Infernip here because of the fact that we've got that against um, Ferrothorn um, do we bring Ditto and Rayquaza or do we bring Ultra Necrozma Could Ultra is Ultra Necrozma going to be good here I just don't see it being as good as it potentially could be I'm going to bring Ditto and um, sorry and Rayquaza I think they're the two that I want to go for here um, primarily because if we can get Ditto into a Kyogre, uh, like a free switch in, especially in Tailwind, if we can get the Tailwind up with Crobat, and then we can get uh, a Scarf Primal Kyogre. That's something I've wanted to do all week with this Scarf Ditto. Then I think we're, we're, we're in a good position, especially alongside maybe our Banded Rayquaza, which could be extremely strong. Um, okay, this is a nice this is a nice lead for us because we can fake out the Kyogre set up our tailwind, puts us in a really nice position going into turn two. The Incineroar obviously can't fake out our Crobat, so that is a bit of a bonus for us, definitely. Um, but we need to, I think, more than anything, preserve our Incineroar because uh, <laughs> our Infernip. Again, so I'm so confused with these fire starters. I'm just like, yeah, I've just got Incineroar on the brain. And especially when it pops up every time, I'm like, obviously going to just see it. Um, so we'll fake out the Kyogre. We need to keep Incineroar, though, uh, Infernip, though, because of that potential Ferrothorn in the back. Without it, it does become a lot more difficult to deal with. So we will fake out the Kyogre. Um, and we'll see what this Incineroar does. It could U turn, I guess. Um, it's interesting that my opponent hasn't brought their Crobat though. Um, such a good way to just get uh, like a handle on speed control, especially when you're looking at m m the options that we've got potentially to, to shut down is Infinite with Faker, which doesn't affect it, which my opponent's having exactly the same issue with now, and uh, either going for the speed tie with either Crobat 
to try and taunt, but it's very risky because if you, you lose the speed tie, you lose the speed control. Uh, we'll see a fake out from the Incineroar into Iron Furnip. It does, you know, do a little bit of damage there, but it's fine. Um, and we get a tailwind up with Acrobat. So this is this is looking alright for us right now because we can go for a tasty old Super Fang into the Kyogre, chunk that down to half health. Uh, and we could bring in Ditto right now. I'm gonna do it! I'm gonna do it! I'm gonna bring in Ditto. I feel like it's a good opportunity to bring in Ditto uh, <laughs> and get scoffed Primal Kyogre on the field. Come on, Ditto, do your thing, my little, my little wonder blob. There you go. Turn into that huge whale. And Sinnoh are gonna switch out. What are we gonna see? Rayquaza. Okay. It's fine. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Okay. Um, Kyogre Protect. Even better. Even better! <laughs> it is, it's so good. Uh, it really is. Um, because this next turn we can we can totally go for the double into the Rayquaza if we want. Uh, I still think Super Fang. Let's see what this Kyogre's got. Uh, I'm kind of tempted to go for the Rayquaza to be honest. I'm not really fussed about what this, this Kyogre is going to do. Um, the other thing is the Kyogre could switch out into Incineroar and the Rayquaza could protect. Um, that's definitely an option. Um, I'm gonna go for the Ray. I'm gonna go Super Fang Ice Beam into the Rayquaza. Okay. Ganathy and Thinora come out, which is a bit of a pain in the backside, but I mean. <sighs> we should have just locked in with that water spout there. Would have done more than enough damage. Got rid of this dang blasted Incineroar, but it's fine. Um, I think what we'll do. The uh, Origin Pulse coming out. Oh, it's going to take a bit of damage from it, but it's fine. Crobat going down to Nelly Sash. Uh, the problem I think here is that we'll see potentially. Um, I don't want to switch because I feel like if if we see the Incineroar and we're locked into uh, Ice Beam, which is never a good thing with Kyogre, actually. Um, I'm going to switch into Ray. I just would, if I could have locked into Origin Pulse with our Kyogre here, would have been better because then you're kind of saying to the Incineroar, well, if you don't fake out the Kyogre, you take a water type attack. If you do uh, fake out into Crobat, you will get rid of it, but then the Kyogre gets a free attack off. So uh, there's a fake out. It's into the Ray, which is fine. Uh, we'll get the Super Fang into the, the Kyogre, uh, and the Tailwind does pit her out. We can get another Tailwind up though, so that's the, the big bonus for us here, um, which I think we will do. And uh, we'll go for the Mega Evolve, and we'll go for the Dragon Ascent. And I'm pretty sure a banded, a banded Dragon Ascent, I'm hoping, gets this Kyogre here. We're not intimidated. <sighs> Although, most Kyogre are are built to take this attack. Kyogre, gonna retreat though. Like a little girl. The girl that it is, this type of Goku comes in. Okay. Um, it's gonna be ideal if we see this Incineroar you turn this turn into something like Kyogre or Rayquaza because then we get a Tailwind up, get potentially Rayquaza, but uh, Kyogre back on the field. And then we can lock into Origin Pulse. And this banded Dragon Assault Dragon Ascent is still going to do a ton of damage uh, to the car, the Tapu Koko. Damn. Look at that damage. It's crazy. Uh, there's a U-turn. Crobat, he will go down. No. Wow. Okay. Yeah, Rayquaza coming back in. Makes a lot more sense. Hmm. Let's go for a Super Fang into the Rayquaza. And go for... Um, hmm. 
Could we pull Ditto in here into Tapu Koko? Because I feel like the Tapu Koko just protects anyway. I'm going to do that. Yeah, and then we get to preserve Ray for a little bit later in this match. We get a Super Fang onto the Ray. Potentially get rid of um, the Crobat here. So we get a free switch in this next turn. There's the Mega Ray. Going for the Mega Ray. We could have doubled into the Ray, but I feel like you probably extreme speed maybe from your Rayquaza into ours, if anything. The Tapu Koko might protect as well. Yeah, okay. But if we can get the Super Fang and then that Rayquaza will be in, it'll def... Oh. oh, come on. This is really... We didn't need that Super Fang to miss. Yeah, and Tapu Koko going down. Okay. Mm, that's frustrating. That is frustrating. Um... I'm gonna have to get rain. The problem is that the Crobat isn't able to take anything down, which is really, really annoying. Um, and we can't leave the Rayquaza unchecked because it's just gonna drag and ascent us. Um, the Coco has just protected, so. <sighs> If we lose our Ray, we lose any ability to win this match. That's the problem. Like, that's the problem with the Super Fang there. Um, and I'm going to have to go for the, the Coco because the Coco... Well, no. I think I have to go for the Rayquaza because the Coco could have Twinkle Tackle. But I think it's... It's... it's yeah, okay. I think it's Banded Ray. Yeah, we're probably going to lose our Rayquaza either way, I think, in this situation. That's super... Ah, we need it. We need, really need it. My opponent's played it well because they're not allowing the Crobat to go down. They're not really too worried about it and taking things down next to it, which is really what you should do the whole time. It's a little bit frustrating as we're going to see the Twinkle Tackle here and we've got no way to deal with uh, the Incineroar or the Kyogre now, um, unfortunately. Oh, maybe we have. Maybe. It depends if. We can get the Kyogre with a Super Fang. And a close combat. But we, we ha we're, we're not even getting the, the, the Coco. The Coco is still sitting happy here right now. And I think the Incineroar comes in. Gets the Intimidate. Probably U-turns. Yeah. We do. Do we have Faint on Incident? Do we have Faint? Because Faint might be enough to get the Coco. Unless we see the Coco protect here, and this could be an opportunity for us just to close combat. Well, Super Fang. We do have Faint. Okay. So we could close combat. We, right, we're banking on the Coco protecting here. So we, we have to fake out the Incineroar and Super Fang it and hope the Coco protects, which it doesn't. So we could have got rid of it. Uh, yeah, and then now, now it is 100% done. We had to have the Coco Protect there. Yeah. Because I don't think a Faint is going to be enough to get the Coco. But then we would have been kind of banking on that this next turn. <sighs> okay. Is it enough? Nah, no way. Nah, that's it. It's done. It's done. It's done. 
That is disappointing. That is disappointing. I feel like that was definitely a winnable game. Very good game to my opponent. Um, the Super Fang miss is unfortunate. I don't think it was like the pivotal turn of the game. It just definitely was unfortunate for us because it kind of tied our hands. And I think the biggest thing for us, like I mentioned already, was the crawback just not going down when we needed to to give us that free switch in to actually utilize our, our tailwind. Um, maybe we would have been better off not locking into Ice Beam. It was a bit obvious when we had the Kyogre in. If we locked into something like Water Spout there, then it probably would have appeared off a lot better. Um, at least to take advantage of our Tailwind turns when, when we didn't lock into it. And then as soon as the race switches out, then we lose kind of momentum. We have to switch out. We have to readjust our board position. And uh, things got a bit dicey from there. But I think in a team, well, it's so difficult because in this situation where they had the, the Coco and the Rayquaza, if we target the type of Coco there, then we probably lose our Rayquaza to a Dragon Ascent anyway. That's where Intimidate would be useful in that situation to make sure that we could get the Coco and then nullify the Rayquaza enough so the <laughs> Dragon Ascent doesn't take us down. But regardless of that, We'll have to see if we can claw things back in this next one. So we've got an next opponent. We'll hop over into team preview. Okay, so our next opponent is running a team of Landorus Therian, the Tapu Fini, Kyogre, Serena, Rayquaza, and Kangaskhan. So another Rayquaza, Kyogre com combination with support options from Kangaskhan. The Serena is going to be a bit difficult for us to get our Rayquaza going, get our, our fake out going as well. Um, but we do have... Crawbat that can be very useful here uh, with our Tailwind. And maybe this is one where we can bring along Golduck. Um, because Golduck in a Tailwind, uh, my opponent's got very little speed control. Golduck can definitely take down the Landorus, definitely take down the Rayquaza. It's got Scald for um, the Kangaskhan. So it's, it's not bad at all here. I'm going to lead off with, with Crawbat. Um, do we bring in Infernape though? I don't feel like Infernape's doing really that much here at all. Um, could lead off with Golduck for sure. Could lead off with, with Duskmane. I think I'm gonna have to make some quick suggestion, quick selections. So we've got we've got the Golduck in though. The Golduck has been selected, so it's not the worst. We run out on team preview, but talking about it too much. Talking about that previous game too much. Okay, five losses. Two, I think two wins still. Two wins this week. That's, that's that's bad. We can get a win here. That will pull us to three wins. Five losses and it will put us in touching distance tomorrow of doing something. Okay, so we're going to see uh, Kyogre and Kangaskhan come up from my opponent. We're guaranteed our tailwind, whatever, whatever, the, whatever happens here. So that's, that's fine. Okay. Um, do we need it though? I'm definitely going to go Tailwind. We could Ultra Burst and Swords Dance, but I don't feel like it's the best thing to do. I think we're probably better off just protecting this turn. Um, and yeah, go for the Tailwind with Crawbat. If the Kangaskhan doesn't fake out the Crawbat as well or attack into it, then Crawbat's going to be around the next turn. So that's that's all right, isn't it? And we got the potential to double up on something. But we're actually going to see it's Scarf Kyogre, isn't it? Oh no, oh no, oh no, and water spout, here we go. I should have noticed that, oh come on, scoff Kyle. So we lose our, lose our tailwind. Um, okay, let's bring in Ray. And I guess, let's do we go after the the Kyogre or do we go after the, the Kangaskhan? I mean, we could Ultra Burst and go after the Kangaskhan. I'm actually going to go after... I'm going to go after the Kangaskhan and I'm going to... Oh, I just don't want to take a water spout, really. That's the problem. Um, I think we've got our Ultra Burst. Because we could Earthquake. Sunseal Strike's never going to get. I'm going to Swords Dance and hope that we can take 
Yeah, we should be fine. I think, like, the the banded ray will be able to get the Kangaskhan, I'm pretty sure, unless it's, like, uber bulky. But we should get it. And that will give us a free turn to get a sword stance up with our Necrozma. And then we'll see where we go from there. But we get rid of the rain, that's a big help. We've got two dragons on the field, another big help. It's just getting rid of this Kangaskhan, that's the big thing. There's the water spout, we can't prevent that, it's scarfed. Still doing decent damage, isn't it? And there's a sword stance. Come on, Ray. Let's get this Kangaskhan. Please get it with the Dragon Ascent. We've got the choice band. We should be getting it. We should be getting it, I say. Let's see, do we get it? Ray, you get... You're a monster. You're a monster, Ray. <laughs> okay. We're probably in water spout range, though, after the defense drop. That's the only problem. <sighs> right. Okay. So Rayquaza going to come in. Hmm. I mean, can we take... Can we take a water spout? What's it done? It's in 60. I think we probably can. It's just an extreme speed in a water spout that would be a bit of a problem. Um. Now... I'm gonna go for the Sunsteel Strike into the opposing ray. We've gotta hope that it's not sashed and we should be able to get it with Necrozma. It's just banded extreme speed could be a problem. So we're gonna see the Kyogre switch out. Uh, that's fine. Uh, Sunsteel Strike, we've gotta hope that this Rayquaza isn't sashed and we will pick up the knockout, as long as it's not sashed. Wow, okay, we don't even pick up the knockout there. Plus two, man. That is disappointing. We'll get the Serena. Yeah. Now where's Rayquaza going to target? Where are you going? I'd say you probably go after our Rayquaza. Ooh, it's going for a sword stance. Okay. Hmm. We might need to readjust our positioning a little bit. Maybe get our Rayquaza out of here. Because um, an extreme speed... From our, from our Rayquaza could be more useful, I think. And they've got to go for extreme speed into our Ultra Necrozma to really get us with the Sword Stance. Okay, let's see what we've got in the back. We've got Gold Duck. Let's bring Fodder Gold Duck in for Rayquaza and just protect with Necrozma here. Uh, I'm hopeful that we can do this. I'm hopeful. Not feeling massively confident right now, but... We'll just have to see. Extreme speed. Wow, it's into our Rayquaza. Leaving. Huh. That's mad. Okay. Hmm. I have to go for the Ice Beam into the Ray. And I think I probably have to go. Like an earthquake's not gonna get this Kyogre though, that's the problem. Um Gotta go Sunsteel Strike into the Kyogre just to get some damage off onto it and hopefully put it in extreme speed range. It's extreme speed. Okay, gold duck gun down. It's not the worst. We're gonna lose both our targets here. Could have protect uh, I don't think we take this, do we? Nah. And then the ice beam. <sighs> yeah, this is what I mean. It's not It's not looking ideal for us at all. We're not going to be able to get the Kyogre in two hits. And we need to lock into extreme speed as well. Um, <sighs> hmm. Oh, we can go for the speed tie. The thing is, the Rayquaza on, on the my opponent's end could just protect here and just get like the Ice Beam off with Kyogre. It's probably the thing that I would try and do. 
we do win the speed tie. Uh, if it's not even a speed tie, is it? It's not even mega ray. Uh, but the ice beam going to come out, and I don't think we can take two of these. Not even one. Oh, terrible! Scoffed Kyogre, destroying our dreams in this last match. Man, things aren't going well. <laughs> the switch ups today have been terrible. Oh, so disappointed. You know, we get a great selection of Pokemon. You think, ah, oh, it's good. We've got these big, powerful Pokemon. And just the execution of it has not been good. Okay. Um, I really hope you have enjoyed today's episode, regardless of the results. Let's take the results out of the equation. We're going to be coming back tomorrow. We've got one button we can activate. Before we get into anything tomorrow, we will activate that Patreon button and we'll see which Pokemon we get from our Patreon members uh, to change up the team and hopefully change things up a little bit going into the last episode. I'm not really convinced about the Infernape. Let me know if you would change anything up going into tomorrow's episode. But more importantly, go over to our nominations page, our post on our community section. Get your nominations in for next week and uh, I'm already looking forward to it. I'm crying inside, but no, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I say it's fine. I say it's fine. Anyway. Remember that we have a stream going on tonight. It is Thursday, so 8 p.m. this evening. We'll be over on Twitch playing some serious Pokemon with serious teams. So come over, drop by if you are around. I'll be tweeting out. You can follow me over on Twitter, OsirisVGC. I'll let you know when the, the stream goes live. It'll be a lot of fun. And if you can't make it, don't worry, because I will be uploading it to the channel afterwards anyway. So it'd be great to see you there. If not, I will see you all for tomorrow's episode. So until then, guys, thanks for hanging around. Thanks for enjoying the episode. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you all for the next one. So until then, take care and bye-bye.